Welcome, ladies and gents, to Your Buddy John Show, episode number five. John Mueller here. Happy Memorial Day weekend to everyone. I've got a great guest coming on. Really excited to get her. She is a uh, very classy lady. She starred in the Buddy Holly story. She played Marie Elena Holly, Buddy Holly's wife, opposite Gary Busey in a 1978 smash hit movie that is still played on every channel you can imagine, it seems like. It's always showing up somewhere on some TV station somewhere. But uh, that's not all. She was a uh, Playboy bunny as well. Ooh la la. And uh, also quite a few movies and TV roles. She uh, guest starred on Three's Company with John Ritter and uh, another TV series called A.K.A. Pablo, a Norman Lear-produced TV show, and uh, quite a few other movies. We'll talk to her about all those and... Uh, Lots of other fun things. So without any further ado, please welcome Maria Richwine. Welcome, Maria, to the Your Buddy John Show. It's what a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for inviting me. How are you making out with all this uh, COVID-19 situation? Um, well, you know, it, it could be worse. Yeah. I'm healthy. Um, I'm happy. I'm I like my solitude, but I really miss friends. I miss hugs. I miss right? dinner parties, dinner parties with girlfriends and and guy friends. And but I've discovered painting. I've been painting a lot. Um, it's a new passion. I I've done about seven of them already. Wow! They, they range between landscapes and portraits. And um, you know, I actually lost my pup, a seventeen year old dog, in November. So oh. I sent I sent away a digital photograph of him and they sent me back it's a paint by numbers thing they sent me back the canvas with all the little lines and all the little numbers and the paints that court of correspond to each number and i painted a portrait of my puppy which is really came out really well so i'm framing it and sending it to my son who lives in san jose because that was his childhood pup oh that's great 17 years that's a long life for a dog that's great 17 yeah he, he was a good friend so what kind of uh, style is your painting? Is it more uh, impressionistic um, or, or more realistic? Or These are uh, these are paintings that are done by artists, and then they convert them into a canvas that is just with lines. Oh. With like, like, it's like almost like a, a puzzle, yeah. you know, uh, except that it's on canvas, and I have a brush, several brushes, and lots of different colors, and the colors are numbered, and the spaces on the canvas with the lines are numbered numbered so the the correlated paint goes on the correct number and at the end of this whole thing you just have this piece that you it looks fabulous but it kind of it's kind of like cheating but still i am actually painting i'm putting the brush to the canvas and and it looks and it feels and it it just takes my mind off the problems and in the world and, yes yes well, the world, that yeah. sounds really cool because I, I imagine it gets you even though it's they're, they're guiding you with the numbers and stuff at least you, mm-hmm. you're getting a chance to see how a real artist would do that you know that's that's well, cool it, yeah it's inspired me to buy some plain canvases and i think i'm going to start doing my own uh you know take some photographs and do my own paintings now i think i'm ready <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds cool so I want to start from your beginning, Maria, because I'm very, very fascinated by um, your success and um, your career. Um, your your father brought you to uh, America. How? How did that all happen? You, you're originally from um, Ca- Cali, Colombia. Yes, I was born in Colombia. Um, my mom and my brother stayed in Colombia while my father came to the United States, uh, to Manhattan, where he was studying uh, engineering. And he was working for Sears uh, in Colombia, and they they sent him here to you know, complete his studies. And after a while, probably took a year or so, he had saved up all his money because he was working at night and going to school in the daytime. And they sent um, for my my brother and my mom and myself, and we lived in this little tiny flat in Manhattan. Um, and we had landed during the winter where it was like, you know, snore storm. And we, I, coming from the tropics, I, <laughs> we weren't prepared <laughs> yeah. for that. So we had to wear all the layers that we owned. And, and I remember the little frosted toes. And we finally learned how to cope with that because we lived there for four years. And then my father decided to come to L.A. And we drove across town, country in Route 66 in an old Ford. And um, we've been here ever since. Wow. What was that like for you as a little girl uh, seeing the uh, United States in, uh, in the backseat of a car? That must have been pretty impressive. 
It was. We went through a lot of, uh, you know, as many states as you have to to go through town. Yeah. From town to town to get across to LA. I remember uh, stopping at some of the reservations and, um, you know, some of the towns that were so, so foreign. Not like anything I'd ever seen. I'd only seen the big city and the tropical, tropical country. But, um, yeah, I learned a lot. I also uh, you know, enjoyed just hanging out with my parents and doing, stopping, doing little picnics. And yeah. Just a, it was a modest but a beautiful childhood, you know? Yeah, yeah. I understand uh, you got uh, influenced by Audrey Hepburn performance. Did that uh, help you... Uh, Get the acting bug, per se? Yes, absolutely. I, my father took me to see Breakfast at Tiffany's. I remember there was a, a, it was a Radio City Music Hall. There was a Rockette show, and then it was Easter. So they had a movie afterwards, and the film was Breakfast at Tiffany's. Wow. And I just sat there, and I, I looked at my father, and I said, Daddy, I want to be like that girl. <laughs> and, he, and he said, me, anything you want, you could do if you really work hard for it. And so it was a secret that I had for years and years. And I wanted to take ballet class and tap dance. And my mom bought me a pair of tap shoes that said Hollywood on the bottom of them. And <laughs> um, yeah, I thought, wow, one of these days. So yeah, long story short, we come to um, L.A. and um, I started taking ballet lessons here. And that led to all kinds of groovy things. But as a child, though, I got to get back to this. I didn't know that I was going to be doing a film called The Buddy Holly Story 18 years later. <laughs> but let, me, let, let me tell you the weird coincidence. Um, there's a guy by the name of Buddy Epson who plays Doc, uh, uh, Holly Golightly's husband. Oh, yeah, so Buddy here, Epson. Ho- Holly Golightly and Buddy Epson are in this movie that inspired me to, like the, like the universe was calling for me to do this. Years later, I would be playing in a movie called The Buddy Holly Story. <laughs> yeah. who, who knew? That's, that's fantastic. And it sounds like your parents were very supportive of your, uh, your oh, art yeah. ambitions. Yeah, they're very they're very proud. They're um, you know, I couldn't afford to take more than one dance class a week, so I practiced all week until pretty soon I excelled to the point where I was doing on point, which was really interesting because that's you know that takes years of practice so yeah uh, one thing led to another and after the the ballet lessons when i was a little bit older i started teaching aerobics oh um, wow i was about 20 20 years old and this is i'm fast forwarding here yeah um one of my students was a woman uh, who was the bunny mother at the playboy club across the street and I didn't know anything about Playboy Club or bunnies. And she said, look, I have 25 positions open and about 800 girls who are applying for this job. But I'd like to offer you the job because I really like your style. And I said, what, what is it? He said, well, she goes, it's basically a waitress with a, a rabbit outfit. <laughs> <laughs> she said, but it's much more glamorous than that. And you have to go through three weeks of training and, and it's very rigorous and it's very strict. And there are lots of rules, and um, you know you have to follow the rules. You can't date the customers, blah 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 blah, blah and all that. So, it, as it turns out, uh, one of the bunnies became my good friend, and she was a camera bunny. And she said, "Let me take your picture. Let's see if you can, you know, maybe we can get you an agent." So she took headshots of me, and then um, I started looking for plays to do because I went. I was going to acting class by that time at night, working the day. And I did, I got a job, I got cast in a play called A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller. Oh yeah, great play. And then a fellow Mexican uh, agent came to see me and he said, I want you to come to my office on Monday because I want to sign you up. And I thought, oh my God, this is incredible. So he signed me up and I started going out to do little things like commercials and I got my SAG card. And then pretty soon I started going out for films and I, I was sent out for this movie. He told me it was called The Billy Holiday Story. <laughs> he didn't know. He had no idea, right? <laughs> he had no clue. And I said, all right. So actually, I found out the real name, and I went to the library and did research because I didn't know who Buddy Holly was. Yeah. So I learned all about Buddy and about Maria and how they had met at Coral Records, and she was Puerto Rican, and she was a secretary. And um, so I was pretty prepared, and I went in there after they had seen 100 girls. and um, 
they called me back for four callbacks. Oh my gosh! Did you read with Gary during that time? Uh, one of the, callbacks? the fourth, the fourth callback was with Gary Busey. And then after the um, meeting audition, we walked around the lot, which was the Culver City lot where they filmed, you know, Gone with the Wind. That building it was Tara. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Joyce Selznick was a casting director, and her uncle was David O. Selznick, um, who did Gone with the Wind. Sure. So anyway, Carrie and I walking around the lot, and he said, "Well, congratulations." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, didn't they tell you 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 booked it? You're going to be Maria Holly." And oh I said, God. nobody told me anything. And so I was flying off the ground higher than a kite. And I went home and I called my agent who didn't even know what the name of the movie was. That's, <laughs> I said, uh, are you aware that I've been cast in this film? He said, no, they haven't told me, but wow, congratulations. <laughs> so, thinking, so this, you know, this is the quality agent that I had back then. It was like yeah. not really good. So, yeah. So that's how that whole thing started. It started with a Holly. Go lightly, breakfast at Tiffany's, inspiration, and then I get this big break in a movie with the same sort of name. Wow! So, so wait, so was this your very first movie audition? That 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 movie? It was my very first movie audition. Wow. I had just done that one play, View from the Bridge, and I had done two commercials, which got me my SAG card. And uh, yeah, I was flying. You must by the have been. My pants. Yeah, you must have been uh, like on cloud nine at this point. Your your very first yes. movie audition, you land, and not only there. Yes, I mean, it, that's... and I, I had studied for a few months uh, in an acting class. It was by the way, we my uh, acting coach. It was Melanie Griffiths and Stephen Bauer and Ray Liotta, and um, it's like a bunch of up and coming young kids. You know, yeah. in those days we were kids. So I was I was with a great acting coach and he really helped me and and but after that it was just instinct it was just me just jump off that bridge climb, you know jump the cliff and go you can't look back you have to do this wow. and I did I did I know it could have been better now that I see it when I see it mm, um, I don't know I don't know I think your performance is uh, I, in fact I was doing some research last night and um, I think it was David Anson from Newsweek magazine said that to you put more depth in that role than that was actually on paper, which I think is very true. I mean, you really, it's a very charming performance, a really good performance. Oh, thank you. It's so funny. I would go on on set to be with Buddy Holly, and I was married to a a musician by the name of Gary. So I'd go on set, and I was with Gary Busey, and I'd go home, and I'd be with another musician named Gary. (laughs) And and I was going through parallel lives, you know? But let me tell you another fun... Uh, coincidence. I've been in love with George Harrison since I saw them at Dodger Stadium when I was a young girl. Yeah. Actually, when I saw them on Ed Sullivan on TV, and I told my mom, I think I want to marry him, George <laughs> yeah. Harrison. And so then um, years later, I realized the, the, the parallel universe that I was living in. I'm thinking, I was working as a secretary, a Latina secretary in a music firm, and then Buddy Holly comes in and I marry him. And then Olivia Harrison is working a Mexican woman, Latina, working in a music company as a secretary, and she marries George Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of similarities I said, there. in some way, I'm connected to George Harrison. And, and I was hoping that maybe, you know, because they did a lot of Holly tunes, cover tunes by him. Oh, yeah. They're big, big buddy Holly fans. I was imagining him in a movie theater or in the screening room looking up, so looking at me, thinking, Whatever he was thinking, <laughs> probably I was hoping I was something nice. So, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Probably was. If he wasn't married, he was probably wondering if he could marry you. <laughs> Latina. Maybe he got the idea. Yeah. Yeah. See. <laughs> see. So what? Oh, tell me what was it like working on that set when when you first came on the first day? Was it? Um, I know it was a fairly lower budget film for the time, right? I mean. Yes, it was. Pretty um, modest budget, but we did. It was critically acclaimed. As a matter of oh, fact, yeah. it, it um, got nominated for three Academy Awards, and including Best Actor. Gary did not win, but um, the fellow who did the uh, the music score, Joe Ranzetti, won the Academy Award for that nice. movie. And so, in those days, I didn't know how else to reach him, so I sent him a telegram congratulating him. That was how, how long ago it was. I sent a <laughs> telegram. 
you couldn't send a fax or an email right, or right. you know. So yeah, that was um, well. When I walked on stage, the first thing they did was give me a screen test so they could see you know the color and the wardrobe and the the makeup and they wanted to make it as authentic at fifties as possible. And um, I was numb, but just in dreamland because it had been something I had been wanting since I was six, seven years old. Yeah. And uh, w- one time I remember walking into the makeup trailer and they had eyed Gary's hair because he just came off a, a, a surfing movie. It was blonde and tan, right. straight, straight blonde hair. They had colored his hair dark brown and permed it. And then he put those glasses on and turned around and he looked at me and he said, hello, Mrs. Holly. And I looked, I went, wow, that's (laughs) amazing. (laughs) He just transformed. He just became buddy. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing transformation. I heard he was a very in-depth, you know, method type of actor. So he was. And as a matter of fact, all of them, you know, you, you must know that all the music was live and yeah. it was played by the three. It was augmented and tweaked, of course, later on. Uh, but I would go to all the gigs and sit on the side and watch. He actually asked me to come down when they filmed the last scene uh, before he flies off to Clear Lake and, you know, in the plane. He, he told me, I need you to come down. I want you to just be here. So he practiced a few songs before he went to film in the trailer while I was there. And it was, I don't want to use the word magic, but it, it, it transcended reality. Wow. He, he just walked into this place, this other place and just, he was amazing. <laughs> it was just amazing to watch. That's awesome. Did he ever like, uh, I know he knew you were married, so he wasn't flirting with you on the set or anything like that, was he? Or? Oh, yes, we flirted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the answer, but I wanted to you know, be a gentleman the way I asked it. Oh, <laughs> yes, we flirted a lot. I even asked my coach, my acting coach, I said, I, I don't know what's going on here. I'm kind of having these feelings, and I'm worried, <laughs> yeah. I'm worried about it. He goes, Maria, that's because you are such a consummate actress. Your body is pretending to be Maria and you're pretending to be in love with Buddy Holly, you're not in love with Gary. You're in love with Buddy. So just <laughs> let, it, let it go. Just, just deal with it, ride with it, enjoy it. Because it's going to be picked up on film and it's going to be real because you're feeling that way. Yeah, well, it showed. Your guys' chemistry was uh, was great. It looked, it looked great. It was comfortable. We really, I felt so comfortable with him. He, he respected me and he said, Don, I let you fall. I'm not going to, don't worry, just trust, just trust, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, after that movie came out, and it was a huge success, and certainly, you know, still is, really, it runs all the time on, like, TBS it's, or whatever, it's you so know? funny, somebody left me a little uh, thing on my Facebook page today, a lady friend, uh, one of the bunnies that I've become friends with, she lives back east, she says, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I saw a movie last night and I thought it was you, but I just wanted to tell you, you were on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, it comes up once in a while. It's it's 40 something years old, but it still holds up because it was a period piece. Yeah. And they, they really um, heated, you know, they respected the, um, the integrity of, of the look. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So did that create a lot of new opportunities for you once you're established in that respect? It, it did, and you know, it, it wasn't the way I thought it would be because basically, I wasn't ready. I wasn't really ready for what was to come, and yeah. I wanted to start small and then build up. And that, when you start at the top, you kind of work your way down, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I started working in lots of ep- episodic television. I did some General Hospital. I did a star guest starring role on, which is one of my favorite jobs ever on Three's Company. Um, I remember after the week of rehearsal, we go up, you read the table read, then you go up and block it and then block it for camera. And then you do for the producers. And then the fifth day you do it for the audience. And so right before we went to audience and filming, he came to my dressing room, John Ritter, to tell me what a great time it was working with me and how delightful I was in the movie. And oh, wow. So generous, you know. That's awesome. What what character was that? What did you play in that? I'm sorry, I haven't seen it. Her name was Maria, and she didn't. I didn't speak any English, and so my cousin, uh, who worked for uh, 
John Ritter, Jack Tripper, said, you know, my cousin's coming to the United States, but she needs a job and because she needs her citizenship papers. Could you help her out? And he said, okay. So then um, they ended up letting me stay at their apartment, and he was just all over the map flirting with me. And I didn't understand a word he said. And so he was saying to me, oh, okay, you can cook for me and you can clean for me. And I'm ask, thinking he's asking me to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going, no, no, no. <laughs> and I said, I'm already engaged. Yeah. And so anyway, it was hilarious. It was so well done. And it really, today I still laugh when I see it. I got to really, check that out. I wonder if it's uh, somewhere It was called I... Cousin Cuisine. Um, I forget which year it was, but it, yeah, it's on my, um, um, on my resume. Nice, nice. And then uh, you got cast as a regular on uh, AKA Pablo, this uh, series that oh, Norman Lear did, right? Yes, I did. And I wanted to tell you that one of the weirdest auditions I've ever had. Um, oh, yes, please do. Yeah, I. this is also a fourth callback. And it was between me and two other lady women who were lovely and you know, doing a lot of work. And I was kind of nervous because they had more, you know, credits than I did. And so I went in to do my audition and I had improvised and did more than was on the page um, because I wanted to, you know, just make it more full. And I was worried that the writers would be pissed off at me. <laughs> right. So I did what I did and then they laughed and then I left and I went outside and this was after six ish and um, it was getting dark and I sat on the curb outside before I got in my car and I started weeping. I was crying because I thought I screwed it up so badly by improvising what wasn't on the page and making things up. And I was like so sad. And then I got in the car, went to uh, meet my friends for a drink because I didn't want to go home. And in those days, we didn't have tele, uh, you know, uh, voicemail. Right. We, we had beepers and we called in the beeper to the place where they kept your messages in a message center. And so after a couple of glasses of wine and drinking of my tears, it, you know, I went home and my telephone started ringing and it was my my agent said, where have you been? I've been trying to get a hold of you. You got the part. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I said, oh, my God, I've been I've been crying for two hours. I thought I ruined the whole audition. He said, no, you got it. And so, yeah, that was fabulous because I got to work with Norman Lear. And with um, so many guest stars, e. B. Arthur came on board. Wow! And um, I mean, oh, it was so fun. And unfortunately, we only went eight shows. The show was ahead of its time, by by yeah. It was the first Latino family on prime time, and it was a Mexican family. The head of the uh, cast was um, pa Paul Rodriguez, stand-up comedian. Yeah that uh, Norman Lear had discovered. And he loved his story so much. He said, I want to write a show about your life. And so that's how it started. And then they cast me and a bunch of other people to be his family. And um, yeah, the show didn't make it, but it was a great run for me. And yeah. That's really cool. So I, I got it. Before we go on more with your career stuff, I got to go back to the uh, the Playboy Bunny. You were the first Latina Playboy Bunny. Is that correct? Well, no, I don't believe I was the first Latina. I think I was the first Latina Playboy Bunny who should become an actress. Oh, okay. I got you. Because they had clubs in Panama and all over the the world. Right, actually. right. Of course, of course. So did you get to go to the Playboy Mansion? Because that's always been a, something I really wanted to do. And of course, I'll never get to do. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Actually, um, we, there were several of us who were asked to go up uh, in evening gowns, uh, with little badges are with our names to uh, you know welcome the guests and show them the grounds and sort of tour give them a tour. Uh, so we were uh, we weren't in our bunny costumes. You right. know, we were in, in our regular evening gowns. Well, they weren't gowns. They were like nice dinner attire. Dinner attire, sure. Um, so, but also we were invited whenever we wanted to go up um, to watch a movie or go swimming which I hardly ever went. One time I uh, was invited to go, I was um, invited to go to, it's called Midsummer Night's Dream, and it's all pajama party. <laughs> nice. Everybody, ha everybody has to wear jammies, and the girls usually wear little tiny teddies and, you know, very sexy stuff. But I went with uh, some 
silk pajamas, some silk Chinese pajamas, very <laughs> modest. Um, but I asked them, I said, may I bring my husband? Because at that time I was married. Yeah. And they, they said, I don't think so. No. And I said, well, <laughs> I, don't, then I, I don't think I want to go. And then they called me back and said, Hess said it's okay for you to bring your husband. So I I got treated my husband to a fun evening at the Playboy Mansion. Oh, what a lucky man. What a lucky man. That's really cool. I uh, Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I hope my mom's not listening to this episode because uh, I, uh, when I was a teenager, my next door neighbors um, gave my parents for some reason a subscription to Playboy. Oh. Yes. And uh, I figured out a way to take it out of the brown paper without them knowing it. And <laughs> So, oh my god! <laughs> but you know, I was just reading the articles because the writers were so good. You know, of course, Jimmy Carter was interviewed. Yeah, yes, we know that. exactly. All the, <laughs> they, they interviewed Brando, all, all, all sorts of people that I was interested in reading about, and then I would put the magazine back in the in the uh, the brown paper. The paper bag. Nobody was the wiser. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, here's another story about the the Playboy. Um, I was asked by Hef after the film because I. Left in 77 at the end of the, like in November to do the film. And we wrapped around January. And I, I was still a bunny, you know, by 78. And then he said, I would like you to pose for the magazine. I want to do a pictorial with you. And I said, you mean nude? And he said, yeah. And I said, I don't think I can do that because I really am serious about my work and my career. Yeah. And I, I said, I wouldn't mind posing in your magazine with the bunny costume. That would be a privilege, uh, you know, an honor. And he said, well, you know, that's a good idea. So then they, <laughs> they, uh, they had a photo a photographer come and do a photo session with me at the bar in the club in front of all of the, um, the playmate, you know, uh, photo, photographs that were hanging on the wall. So I didn't have to be naked, but they were, you know, already in the magazine and they were on, a, on pictured in frames. And I just stood there with my little tray and the drinks and it's a really pretty photo. And they put it in the magazine um, in one side. And on the other side, they put a photo of me and Gary in the movie. And they did a story right up about me and him and Buddy Holly's story. Oh, that's great. That was very generous of him to do that because he knew I'd, I wouldn't post nude. Yeah, I think that was a wise career choice that you took. Right? Yeah, I mean, I left that to the big girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was Hef nice? Was he a nice guy around you? He was the most lovely, gentle, respectful man. He was responsible for bringing in blacks into the club, and he also hired a lot of uh, black bunnies and there's a story that went which is written and i think it's in one of his documentaries there was a bunny serving a, a table and when you go to the table you you give your name my my name is maria may i have the member's key please well one of the members at the table didn't like her and went to the manager and said i would like a different bunny mm. And we knew what he meant. Right. And so the manager said, I would like your key, please. Wow. You're no longer, you're no longer a member here. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> that yeah. was fabulous. Yeah. So, yeah, Kefner, um, we, we have a, a reunion every two years with the bunnies uh, somewhere different. Last year was, um, well, last year was in Hollywood. Before that was Baltimore, then New Orleans. Well, Hef uh, made a little video for the bunnies and to celebrate the 50th anniversary and um, to tell us all to thanks uh, so much for being basically the bones of the, of the industry of the club. Sure. Uh, uh, we were the face of Playboy and he hired basically girls that were like next door, the girl next door types. The playmates were different. They, you know, they were buxomy and naked. Yeah. The bunnies, the bunnies were girls, were sweet. They were gentle. And we all, had uh, aspirations. You know, there were women who were going to secretarial school, law school. Some of them were mothers. Some of them were uh, aspiring actresses. And he actually paid a lot of tuition for a lot of the girls. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah, he was responsible for liberating a lot of the antique thinking. Sure, sure. Having that credit and, and the Buddy Holly story right off the bat with your uh, career, your budding career was... Uh quite quite an accomplishment for you, I think. Yeah, you know, it changed my life, yeah. really did. I, I think that being a bunny uh, was a real help to me because I go on the floor with that very elegant sort of costume that it was amazing the way that made the, it fit the girls. And I would pretend that the 
that the customers that at the table were the camera and I would be my job was to you know just walk around and give them their their drinks and make sure that they were okay so I got used to how having eyes on me wherever I went so when I got on set and the camera started rolling it didn't matter to me it was you know, I just went into my world and I became Maria Holly and I didn't care that the camera was there because I already trained myself to thinking that the eyes were going to be on me and those were the, that was the camera. Right. So really, really good training for me. Good training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. What, uh, what was your favorite, uh, let's say another movie that you did that um, was a favorite of yours besides the Buddy Holly story? Um, I've done, you know... I didn't really do a lot of other films. I did one in uh, the Philippines uh, with John Saxon, and that was fun. I, I learned to speak a little bit of Tagalog. Uh, I played a woman who who was widowed, and he came and sort of came into my life. Didn't do very well. Um, there was another film that was not very well received either, critically acclaimed. It was called... Originally, it was going to be called Wolf Judge, but it became Sex Crimes. It was about a judge, myself, who was witness to all of these men who were committing murders and rapes and were getting away on a technicality. Mm. And so I decided to get into different costumes and go at night and seduce these different men in different costumes and bring them back to wherever and kill them. (laughs) Oh, wow. So my favorite part of that whole movie was, you know, Machete, um, Danny Trejo. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the, the bad guys that I was out to get. And so I seduced him into coming to one of the motel rooms with me. And when he took his shirt off, I see that well, in rehearsal, I saw he had this Mexican woman all across his chest with a big sombrero and... I'll never forget that. He's a great guy. And I got to shoot him and kill him. I got to kill <laughs> my, my chest. <laughs> that was that was really fun, although the film never did very well. But some of those scenes were so fun to shoot. Yeah. What was this uh, Desperado, the Outlaw Wars TV movie? What was oh, that? yeah, that was a TV series. It was actually a TV movie of the week. And I got to play an Indian woman. And it was um, really fun. I, it was, we filmed it somewhere, I believe it was New Mexico and some tribe up in the hills. Um, it, it was just a bunch of cowboys and Indians. It was fun to do and it was fun to watch. And um, I'm sorry it didn't become a series. I think it was a pilot. What was, uh, did you have any, uh, I know in my initial acting career, I had lots of experiences where I had, you know, a promise of something really spectacular going to happen. And then it just went, fell apart for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Like I I got cast in a national commercial once for um, Mm -hmm. a beer company. And then um, I was supposed to be a young rock and roller in it. And, uh, and then the director found out that they had to use this band from Chicago that was contractually obligated to the uh, beer company as a part of their sponsorship. And so they had to, yeah. It was one of those commercials, Maria, that was gonna, was going to run for like, you know, two years, and it was also a series of different spots. So it was it was a big deal, and uh, could have been a really lucrative, yeah. Yeah, and then a couple other like TV series things that uh, just for whatever reason didn't materialize. Did you have? Of course, you started out with such a bang. Did you? It was probably probably didn't. Yeah, have... there, there, one of them that comes to mind um, was a. A pilot that we shot. I got cast in a pilot uh, uh, opposite Michael Madsen. Oh my God, that was oh wow! It was so it was so much fun to work with. I got had the biggest crush on him. Yeah, <laughs> and also yeah, and also Ray Liotta was in that in that pilot. And then um, when it came to the series, got picked up, and the production team, whoever they were, the producers the studios, they decided they wanted a blonde to be married to Michael Madsen. So they, they recast it without me. And I was so shocked and devastated. Oh, I hate and that went stuff. Up. Yeah, it was awful. So there was another time early on when a big producer really loved my work. And he said, I want to sign you up for a three picture deal. 
and I'm thinking, wow, that's that's incredible. Yeah. And as time went on, it just was just talk. It was just talk, 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 and then nothing happened. And so, yeah, you get promises, promises that didn't tr- come to fruition. Yeah. Did you ever have any uh, those horrible audition experiences where, um, like, a casting director made you wait for a couple of hours and then <laughs> didn't let you? Oh, I've got one better than that. Yeah. This is this really happened. Um, I was already, you know, feeling my oats. I was pretty happy with what was going on. I was riding a little high on my stuff. Yeah. And I went into this audition where I thought they knew who I was. And um, I don't know, don't remember the casting director's name or if she was an assistant. But I'm sitting there with her doing my, you know, reading through the, with the script to her and her phone rings and in the middle of my audition she picks it up and starts having a conversation with somebody oh, God. and I and I and I put it you know I stopped and then we continued and the phone rang again and she picked it up again oh. and so I said I think my audition is over and I walked out and so my agent got so upset with me she said you don't do that I said look I don't need that job. No, Sorry. it's disrespectful. Good for you. I'm glad you no, did that. It's disrespectful. And if they never call me again, you're next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's not the only casting director in town, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. Th- I don't know if people like the general audience realizes what actors go through um, t- to actually get the role. Sometimes there's a lot of uh, a lot of strangeness that goes on and a lot of hardship. And um... yeah. So tell me about this. Um, TV series, I assume it uh, was a Latin-influenced TV series called Sin Vergüenza. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. Uh, there are two. And the, this, this call, it's called New Media, and these are shows that come on. One of them was on Hulu, which was called East Los High, about the kids in East L.A. and going to high school. And uh, I played with two other of my Latina actor girlfriends, we played cougars. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> nice. it was just a, just a blast, you know, to playing that kind of fun, you know, silly part. Yeah. The, that was, that got nominated for several, uh, Alma awards wow. and, and, uh, daytime Emmys. This, the sin vergüenza, which means without, without shame is a story about a Mexican family. And basically it was a, public service announcement that went into series about AIDS and HIV awareness. So there's a scene where I play, I'm at a bingo palace playing uh, at the Senior Citizen Center, and I'm with my girlfriend, we're playing bingo, and this older silver-haired gentleman is flirting with me, and my girlfriend tells me, you know, he's really, he was, he's looking at you. I said, no, I just I'd leave me alone, I want to play bingo. So then as the scene goes on, he comes over and we find out that we're each widowed and he says, would you like to go out to dinner? And I'm all blushing, blushing. And and I said, okay. So the scene ends, Yeah. you know, and then the next scene opens and I'm in his bed. (laughs) 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 And I I call my girlfriend and I said, I don't know what happened. I had a few drinks and here I am. I don't know what to do. And then she said, well, did you use protection? And I said, why? I'm, you know, I'm not going to get pregnant. She said, that's stupid. You have to protect yourself. So what we're doing is we're we're pro- projecting to the audience yeah. that no matter who you are, if you're an older woman who's widowed and just happens to be a, in the bingo palace, or you're a young woman dating a guy who's a dog, or you're a gay guy who's openly gay, or you're a, gay, a guy who's a closet gay, or even if you're a wife, you need to start thinking about protecting yourself. Be careful and out there, yeah. Out there, yeah. And it, and it was so successful that they picked us up for three seasons and we were nominated for three um, Alma Awards. We won one. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, that was that. That was so much fun. Um, they might not pick us up again. We're waiting because, you know, the funds are tough right now. The whole industry is shut down. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you're you're a member of a uh, L.A. theater company as well, is that right? Or, you, or I know you do a lot of theater in town. I've done several plays in town, yeah. I'm not currently working on anything. Um, actually, the only thing I have coming up, which I don't even know if I should talk about it because it's not set, is a friend of mine is a writer, and he wrote a script, and he t- calls me up, and he says, look, I just figured it out. 
I need you to be the lead in this this film because you are the perfect person for this because blah, 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 blah. And it's a lovely story about a, aging beauty queens, you know, wow. uh, in in Mexico, uh, well, ladies of the night, basically. And so now in their older years, they're basically homeless and destitute and all that. So it, it's a tragic, tragic story, but it, re- it really happens. And so there's nothing set yet. It's just on paper, but um, it sounds like a great opportunity. And of course, if it goes to studio or gets green lighted, I would love to do it. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be a great role for you. Where yeah. where can um, people find out about what your next projects are? Or is that would they just look at the imdb.com website, or do you have an o- your own website, Maria? Or no, um, I, you know, I decided. You'd like to keep well, a lower profile. Keep a lower profile. I don't need a fan club. I don't yeah. do Twitter. I don't do, you know, all that other stuff. I just work when I work and enjoy it. Basically, I have to tell you, John, the last five or six years, I've been so lucky with commercials. I had a whole rash of them in the last three years that Great. that ran and bled into the next year. So I was getting residuals for two years when I'd only worked one day for one job. Amazing. And I, so, yeah, I just... I did about five or six recently. This whole year has been really bad for everyone. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> terrible. I, I wish 2020 would just kind of go away. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm I'm still, again, I still have my foot in the door. And if I wanted to, I could do a lot of self-tape and submit myself to all that stuff. But I'm just going to chill out, and kind of relax through this and wait till it goes away, hopefully soon and go back and do what I was doing. Cool deal. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show and uh, telling us about your uh, wonderful career and life. And it's um, been an honor and pleasure to talk to you. I, I, uh, is there anything else you would like to uh, toss in? Yes, I would like to say that I was thinking about how we met. Um, I was invited by a friend of yours and mine to a, a club. I forget if it was a Palomino or it was a country club. And um, somebody told me this guy that plays Buddy Holly and is going to be there. And, <laughs> and I said, oh, cool. So Neil Morrow. Neil? Yeah, Neil. Good friend of mine. Yeah, he was saying that. And I guess it was his birthday. So I brought him some autograph fo- photos from the, the set from Buddy Holly. And, and then you asked me to dance. And I'm looking at you. And I felt like... I was in the movie again, and we were <laughs> dancing, and I felt like the bell of the ball. It was such a fun little feeling, you know. Was, you made me feel so special that night. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great story. I remember that night. It was a fun night, and uh, I, I just, I miss that right now, you know, like not being able to do that. It's just uh, tragic. You I know? know. You got it in your blood to do live shows, no? Yeah, live shows, and just, I love the reaction, you know, reacting with the people and fans, and it's just fun, you know? And I've seen you a couple of times and the last time was here in North Hollywood. And you were so amazing. Oh. You guys are so good. It's just crazy Thanks. how how good you are. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Maria. I appreciate that. It was great for you yeah. to come. That was a that was so much fun to see you there. Yeah, well good luck to you, doll. And um I hope I see you again soon. Sounds good. And um let us know if uh let me know if you have a if that movie comes to fruition and um, anything else that you're doing or any new commercials, I'd love to see them. Okay. You take care and be safe. You too, Maria. Thank you so much. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. bye-bye. There she goes. Maria Richwine, ladies and gents. What a sweetheart. Hope you enjoyed that. Hey folks, could you do me a big favor? Next time you're listening to the podcast, please make sure to rate the show if you enjoyed it and uh, follow it. And most importantly, Please tell all your friends about the show. That's a great way for the word to get out. By the way, you can even now, if you have Alexa, say, Alexa, play your buddy John podcast, and it will play the latest episode. Pretty cool, huh? If you'd like to see where my current performances are going to be at, you can go to winterdanceparty.com. I think the first ones are starting in September, hopefully. And in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, please take good, good care, and I'll see you on down the line. See you.